discuss, we're going to be talking about that badass position, the sergeant in arms of the motorcycle club. So we're going to go ahead and get into our intro and let's get started. you guys enjoyed that awesome intro just makes me jealous to get out and ride i got some introductions of a couple people here tonight um we are gonna first welcome mr strike who is rogue souls mc state president or a state sergeant in arms so what's up strike i just called what's you the state on, president man? but you're the state sergeant yeah. in arms you got promoted I I get a second. yeah <laughs> and you got demoted but you know it is what it is so yeah. welcome out strike how was your day not too bad, except for the fact that it was so damn cold. Woke up this morning, it was like negative three. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, it's been really cold. Yeah, I don't All know right, I'm going to go ahead and pull on our other guest. All right, this is our other guest, Chief. He's um, a sergeant in arms of our Twin Peaks chapter. How's it going, Chief? It's been a day, I'll tell you that. I'm agreeing with Strike. It was cold as hell this morning. Yeah, dude, it just... I feel like every day I want it to get warmer and warmer to ride, and every day I wake up, it seems like it's getting colder. So that's not very good <laughs> for us. I'm about to say screw it. Let's just go riding anyway. Like I think if we just start riding, it's going to warm up, you know, and we'll we'll forget it. That's cold. And, you know, we should move on. You might you might be so numb you'll forget. Yeah, <laughs> we'll forget it's cold. That's all that matters, right? Just take a shot of whiskey and then we'll go. You know, we won't be cold. I mean, not don't gotta tell me twice. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome everybody on tonight. Um, looks like we got quite a few guests on already. Um, as always, you know, we're gonna be discussing some topics dealing with the Sergeant Arms. Um, this is our point of views um, from where we're coming from and our experiences. Uh, we're we're not the ultimate say on this topic, and we we can learn too. So. If you have a different perspective on something or you have a comment or a question, go ahead and comment in the comment section. Um, we'll try to respond to comments, but we can't get to all of them. Before we get started, go ahead and smash that like button, hit that subscribe um, so you can continue to follow our content. So, and when we get into it, let's talk about you, Chief, for a little bit. Can you give us a, a little bit of a background or an introduction to yourself? What do you want us to know about you? Yeah, uh, I'll keep it brief, but I, uh, you know, I've been super lucky to be a part of this club. It's been great. The time that I've spent with everyone, brothers and everyone that I've met and been able to be associated with, you know, it's been incredible. Uh, I've had a lot of different things happen in my life. Uh, a lot of things that have led me to be a good fit for this position. And I mean, without going into real specifics, uh, it's, for me, I just love riding, love getting out, hanging out with brothers, and uh, I'm all about keeping uh, keeping the security around certain things intact. Agreed. Well, we feel the same way about you, brother. It's good to have you be a part of the club. Um, we love spending time with you, and we appreciate your point of view. Um, it would be good to hear your perspective on this topic. Chief is also a firearms expert, so... I've heard he's the guy I need to beat in shooting, so we need to get out and do that soon. <laughs> it's been a minute, man. I, I need to go like uh, brush up on my on my skills because it's been a while. <laughs> I've got another brother that keeps trying to get me to go to the range. I'm like, I might be embarrassed to go to the range at the minute. I gotta go hit the range by myself for a day. I'll be, for <laughs> I'll be the first one to say I you know, I went to the range last week and I shot like crap. I was like, man, I gotta get out a little more. <laughs> Yeah, shooting is a perishable skill for sure. And if you don't stay on top of it, it's definitely diminishes. So 
the groups were fine. You know, the, the little accuracy that that's where we that's where we can work on. It'll be a lot easier to go shooting again when uh, ammo prices drop just a little bit more. They're not as bad as they were, but I mean, they're still a little bit more than what I've been used to the last few years. So. The little problem when you're doing target shooting and like you're hitting the hostage and not the hostage taker chief. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where we got to work on some But stuff. my group was good. <laughs> okay, now, that was what, I'm, what, I'm talking about the, when I'm talking the accuracy factor, I'm talking about <laughs> half an inch, okay? That's that's what I'm pissed about, half an inch, okay? Not, oh, yeah. not six inches. I'm just hey. kidding, yeah. All right, gents. Well, um, I told you – uh, Strike is the state SA right now. Chief is the SA of his chapter. Um, I'm going to be kind of hosting this discussion. Uh, I've been an SA for two years in the club. Um, and so I might have a little bit different perspective from these guys, but I'm excited to get, you know, their points of views. Um, but to start off, let's just kind of hit some of the key responsibilities of a SA or a sergeant at arms. It's often referred to as an SA, right? Sounds like a very militant position, but what is it? What are, what are the responsibilities of an SA or a Sergeant Arms? Anyone specific you want to start with? No, you can go ahead and you can prioritize in the way that you you see them, I guess. Well, I, I would say the number one priority would be uh, enforcement of the bylaws. Um, that's where I'd put the, uh, the leading uh, priority there. Um, you know, and right after that, I would go into the club security. I like both within the club and outside of the club. Um, and that's where I'd lead off with the thing, uh, first two priorities right there. What yeah. about you, Chief? What are some well, other I'm, responsibilities? I, you know, I, I can agree with you to a point. But at the same time, I'm thinking someone that's really level-headed is where you got to start with everything. Because if you don't have someone that can – number one, think on their feet, and number two, just look at the facts, mm -hmm. then everything else kind of goes out the window. Yeah, no, I, I agree as far as that is a characteristic, and I think we're going to definitely touch on those characteristics for an SA. Um, when, we're, when we're talking about um, duties and responsibilities, Strike was talking about security, right? And then we talked about, um, you talked about enforcing the bylaws, right? Yeah. And also, um, you have meetings and events in the club, right? Sometimes you're enforcing those bylaws at that. But what other things are you enforcing other than just the bylaws as an SA? Well, well you know, we're also in charge of the prospecting program, you know. Um, that, and like what I was talking about with security, uh, beyond that, we are direct security for our club's president, you know. Um, uh, we got to keep order and discipline both in those meetings you were talking about and outside of it. Um, and that kind of, you know, that's kind of tied hand in hand with security a little bit, you know. Um, so if I were to, you know, more thoroughly define these responsibilities and duties, I'd be starting at the, the where I prioritize the first one, which is uh, enforcement of the bylaws, right? Because you can almost cover the rest of your responsibilities as long as you are well-versed in those bylaws and enforcing those. Um, and I would say first step of the more, most important uh, uh, duty of the Sergeant at Arms is to know your bylaws. Um, you know, we were talking ab about it before and you, you we were talking about how they should be one of the most well-versed. Um, I go a step farther and say that they should be fluent, you know, um, they should know about current changes in the bylaws. Uh, they should know about, um, they should know them in depth. You know, if they're going to be enforcing it, they need to know it in depth. Okay, so you, you're saying that the sergeant arm should be an expert of the bylaws of the motorcycle. Oh, yeah. Okay, so he should be fluent in it. He should be reading them often. Um, how often, as you know, the state sergeant arms, would you recommend that sergeant arms for our club are reading the bylaws? You know, for me, I... I read through the bylaws thoroughly, I would say once every every few months, but before every meeting, when I'm just waiting for other members to show up, sometimes I'll just be sitting there kind of uh, skim reading some of the things I've already read. I'm looking for changes that may have been uh, put in there since, I, since the last meeting. Um, I'm looking for more in-depth uh, 
um, definition of them and how I see them. And then beyond that, I'm also reading them when I'm teaching someone else about something with the bylaws. So when I'm meeting with other, you know, SAAs or members or prospects, uh, prospects, I love quizzing them on, on bylaws, you know, that they're supposed to be learning those bylaws right now. And I'll ask them questions about it and figure out what they know or what they should be learning. Um, so I would say I, I read through them uh, quite frequently. Yeah, so I think you brought up a good point. Um, you talked about the knowledge of the bylaws. You talked about, you know, the frequency that you read them. But really, can you read them enough? I don't think you can, right? Like, I read them a ton. I've been, you know, part of um, rewriting parts of them. Um, but I, I still go through and read them all the time, you know. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's sure. knowledge, right? You can't remember all, you know, 16 pages or however many pages your bylaws are. Um, but it's perishable knowledge. And I think that's a duty of the SAA. What you're saying is to make sure that that knowledge is um, at the forefront of the members' minds, right? Yeah. It's almost an education position too, is like, not only are you supposed to be the expert on the bylaws, but you're supposed to be making sure that the members know it or teaching it to the members, mm -hmm. or even before that with the prospects, right? And yeah. so we talked about um, the prospecting process and you said that the sergeant in arms is oversees the prospecting process can you yeah. guys talk a little bit more about that yeah no for sure do you uh well for me i'm ensuring that our prospects are sticking to bylaws right uh first of all i want to make sure that they fully understand how to appear when we're out in public how to act how to behave themselves um how to ride with the club and how to ride with the group um how to set up their their vest and their colors how to care for their colors how to care for their members how to hold respect and how to treat everyone else um and beyond that i help ensure that you know they're taken care of and they're being taught uh, the way that they're supposed to um you know chief here had you know, i won't get into names or details but he had a situation with uh someone i don't not sure if he was a prospect at the time but with his uh you know there was some writing and i've seen him correct people on their writing on the spot you know that's something you may need to do uh do you have anything to like i remember you were taking care of that situation chief uh do you want to go more into that i'll let you take care of that yeah how do you how do you feel that the essay is influential or um or, or what his responsibilities are in the prospecting program and, and with prospects and their mentors. So, you know, a lot of it comes back to the just overall safety and security. And it's not just when we're not riding and hanging out, it's during the rides, we gotta make sure everything's going on right. You know, we're communicating with other people with the road captains, tug gunners, whatever it may be. And if there's something that, you know, in this instance, something that I noticed mm -hmm. and I kept an eye first time I was like, oh, it could have been a fluke, but that's part of the situational awareness of everything that's happening. So I really had to keep an eye on it and we were able to get to our destination and I pulled the, pulled the person aside and we had a quick conversation and it's, that's, that's kind of the overall thing. It's, it's not always a comfortable thing, you know, going up and telling someone, Hey dude, you just, you made a mistake. And we got to talk about this right now because no one, not a lot of people enjoy confrontation. And yeah. especially, especially when you're out riding with the club and you're getting called out on something, it's not, it's not glamorous. It's not fun. The spotlight is on you, right? Yeah. No, hundred percent. So it comes back to just what strike was saying. You're, you're teaching the etiquette of, writing with a club as far as the prospect the prospects go initially yeah you're, it's all about the etiquette and then keeping an eye and making sure everyone's doing what they need to do to stay safe because if one person goes down it could cause everyone to go down so if there's unsafe writing it needs to be corrected right then and there not oh yeah we'll get to it on another day yeah no 100 percent. i i'm all for correcting an issue you see right then you know, and not waiting for it. Um, 
you know, and that kind of goes in law, uh, along along the lines of one of the other uh, responsibilities and duties we were talking about, which was keeping order and discipline. You know, and like when you're keeping order and discipline, that goes along with what I was saying before. You need to know what the bylaws are. I feel like if you're enforcing the bylaws, you can't just be like, well, I think it says this somewhere in the bylaws and it kind of refers to this. I kind of feel like your SA should be the person that'd be like, no, it's stated Article 9, Section 2, Paragraph 3, under Category C, you know, um, Sentence F, you know, like they should know exactly where it is in the bylaws and exactly what it says line for line. And that's, you know, that's one thing I learned in the military is that, you know, we were always taught that you can make a correction on anyone. Um, but if you are making a correction, especially if they outrank you, you better know what the regulations say word for word. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'll, I'll add one thing, Strike, before I forget yeah, it. Sure. About your, uh, about what you were just talking about as far as reading the bylaws, right? It's, it's always good to read them because, I mean, I know that I read things for work for other things and I'll read the same thing multiple times and... Mm -hmm. I can have a different interpretation or different things stand out to me each individual time that I read it. Yeah. And so then I start digging in a little bit more on that aspect. So if you're what reading. You no, ahead. you're, you're, you're hundred yeah, percent right. Yeah, we found on. that out the hard way. I mean, how many times have we around the table been arguing about the same bylaw and, and we interpret it differently, you know, exactly. it's like exactly. the Bible, you know, how many faces are there of the Bible? Cause they all interpret it differently. Well, and, yeah. If exactly. you're reading the bylaw, with with a goal in your mind right then you kind of start to askew the intent that was written behind it you know you need to go into reading the bylaws focusing on what's in the best uh um for the club you know for the rest of the club what's the well, best comes down, to, comes down to knowledge you know, everyone says knowledge is power well it's the correct application of knowledge is power oh, yeah 100 so percent. if you don't if you don't understand something then learn about it ask about it and this yeah. you know this goes out to everyone in all walks of life for any reason if you have a question about something don't just assume isn't it good to reach out ask get some clarification and then you can base your own interpretation and what you were told somehow figure that out for yourself well yeah you know that's another good thing for the saa to do is to strike up conversations with people uh, about the bylaws and then you know if you are newer to the club and you're questioning uh the philosophy behind a or intent behind a certain bylaw you know check with your senior leadership check with your senior members and talk to them about this bylaw ask them questions right and you know where that comes from reading the bylaws in the first place and but if you're not if you're not reading the bylaws until the you know you're in a problem dealing with the bylaw it's a little too late to pre be researching it you know it's going to be too late at that point uh you got to read it beforehand and understand what every i'm not saying you need to read it every day i'm not saying it is the bible read it every night um but go through and read it now and again read it frequently just go once a week go and read a paragraph one section one article of your own bylaws just one section of your bylaws and kind of just develop some questions from it and go talk to your senior leadership, especially if you are looking at becoming SAA, you know, if there's a, if you're in a position where you even are considering it or you're, you're on the table for it, you need to be studying those bylaws like right away. And it's best if you do that from the beginning, you know, you can be a very successful member if you understand the bylaws. So, you know, we've talked a lot about how important the bylaws are, right? This seems to be a pretty big theme in this discussion um, is basically becoming an expert in the bylaws. Um, I think that extends out a little um, even more um, than just our bylaws, but that extends the club protocol, understanding general club protocol um, mm -hmm. and how things work in the motorcycle set, understanding motorcycle tradition um, at the set and of our and of our specific club. Um, and becoming knowledgeable as much as you can about MCs and how they operate um, and efficiency on it, right? I was thinking a couple um, things I was thinking about earlier today is getting our bylaws and getting our prospect handbook and and our, our copy of our club colors and a couple other things and making a little tiny spiral book that I just keep in my cut that's got it all on there, right? So I could just be able to pull it out whenever if i'm riding at a stop i could be able to just sit there you know and read or if i'm 
got some extra time I can pull it out, sit there and read. If I need to reference something, I can just pull it out, you know? And yeah. um, so that was one thing. And another thing we've talked about is inside of chapter meetings, um, setting aside a little bit of time for the SAA in the beginning of the meeting to basically do a little bit of education for the chapter on, um, on a section of the bylaws that he wants to highlight before the meeting, just continue that education of the bylaws as part of that SAA duty. Yeah, it's kind of like a pastor, you know, um, quoting a section of the Bible, you know, very similar. Yeah. Um, it kind of keeps everyone up on par with it. Um, you did make a pretty interesting um, point earlier when you were talking about the importance of the bylaws. And you said it's extremely important when you try to make a correction above your head. Right. Yeah. And I think you're kind of referencing, you know, making corrections above your head, maybe in the military is like making sure yeah. you understand the regs before you correct somebody who outranks you, right? Yeah. Um, the interesting thing about that is in our last episode about the vice president, we talked about how the vice president offers some checks and balances with the president, right? Yeah. Um, and that same thing in mind, I think the sergeant at arms offers um, a checks and balance to the president on the other side of, of, of things, right? I think the VP is more that checks and balances on the administrative side and the planning side. And I think the SA offers that checks and balances on um, the bylaws side, right? Or yeah. the SOP side or the regulation side and making sure that the president is being true to the club's values and the club's rules and, you know, the club's bylaws. The SAA is really the one person that keeps the president in check to make sure that he is, you know, in line with the bylaws. Yeah, no, 100%. You know, and there's something to be said about how the SAA is one of the major servants of the club, right? Like his, one of his main jobs is to serve the club. Um, you know, and there's something to be said about those checks and balances and, you know, checking uh, on all the bylaws with that. Um you know, I, I was thinking about that and like kind of like thinking about the enforcement and everything and it kind of made me think about how, the you know, with the fact when you are SAA, you need to be able to set your personal hat aside and put on your SAA hat. You know, it's time to put on your I'm serving the club hat. And with that, you need to set aside your personal opinion. You need to set aside some of your personal beliefs and you're putting on your sergeant arms hat now and you are now serv serving the club. Right. Um, and sometimes you may be enforcing something that you may have not have supported in the first place, but now it's your job to enforce it. Yeah. I mean, Strike and I have had conversations like that several times where I may not be 100%, or I may have some questions about where things are going. And so I've called Strike and been like, hey, you know, let's let's talk about this. and you know, SAA to SAA, we've had that conversation of personal opinions sometimes need to be put on the side because we're here in service of the club and the whole of the club. So, yeah. if, you know, if one member has a negative opinion and lets it kind of stew and build up, then it's not going to be good for anyone. So we need to be the examples of, listen, if we have an opinion about something, we need to look at it objectively instead of subjectively based on the needs of the club. Yeah. 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 I agreed. I totally agree with that. Um, I want to bring up Gunn's comment because he's kind of going back a little bit to what we were talking about. He said the SA keeps the P in check question mark. Did I hear that right? Um, do you have a comment on that strike or opinion? Well, yeah, I mean, a hundred percent. Yeah. He's keeping the, uh, the P in check, you know? Um, I mean, he's got to do it tactfully, of course. Now, like if the, uh, you know, the P comes up to you and he's got, and it's like, I, I got an idea. This is what I want to do. This is what I, this is how I want to handle this uh, situation. And this is how I'm going to do it. You may need to remind them in certain situations. Well, I think we need to approach this a little differently because, you know, we need to observe this bylaw, which would, you know, you need to know uh, your bylaws and where you can go into. But like, this is 
part of Article A, Section 3, we should be handling this situation as such. And he'll be like, he'll be like yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. I totally forgot about that. You know, it's like, so we should do this, really. You know, you're not, you're, you're there to keep him in check and in balance, right? Um, to remind him of where the bylaws come into play. The way that I look at it is this, the president has an agenda sometimes, right? And sometimes he gets caught up in an agenda or um, the way that he is trying to move or the way he wants to accomplish something. And the SAA is not just a defender and a protector of the club, but that means a, a protector and a defender of the bylaws. That means a protector and defender of the president, right? We talk about the SAA kind of serving as the president's personal bodyguard, you know, yeah. one out in the set. Um, yeah, absolutely. The SAA, the Sergeant Arms will keep the president in check because he's protecting the president. It's not like I'm being an asshole to the president. It's like I'm I want to make sure that he's staying in line because if if the club is witnessing him crossing boundaries, that's not a good thing for the club and that's not a good thing for him, right? And so, yeah, you protect him from any type of physical threat. Um it would be awesome to say that, hey, presidents are always on the ball and they're always keeping all the guidelines, all the bylaws and everything in their mind. And they have them memorized, too. But the presidents are just people, right? They're doing their best that they can to serve the club. And the SA is another checks and balance that the president has to say, hey, Prez, I'm protecting the bylaws and this is what the bylaws say. You know, we need to um, stay true to what the bylaws say. Right. So. Mm -hmm. I would say, yeah, because the SA is a is a protector of the bylaws, and the bylaws are what governs the MC. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. You have any Absolutely. comments on that, Chief? Um, the only thing that the only thing that really came to mind while you and Strike were talking is the SA is also the confidant of the P, right? So you you're bouncing things off of each other, just mm -hmm. like just like when you're refreshing bylaws and this yeah. situation should be handled this way instead of this way you can talk about it without you know going head to head and creating a brawl it's you're both working through for you got to make sure you're working for the same common goal with and take the route that is going to be best beneficial for everyone involved yeah yeah i yeah and what i, I kind of see you know we talked about the president position. We talked about how the VP is kind of the XO. He's over operations on, on the planning side and, you know, dealing with those officers. And then you have the SAA um, and he's over, you know, a huge portion of what the responsibilities are of the club. And so I see that those three work together in perfect harmony, right? Is that the yeah. president's leading those three and he's got, um, the VP on one hand and he's got the SAA on the other hand and they are his arms in which he there he's able to access that control over the other officers in, in his chapter. Yeah. And so uh, in the perfect world and um, in my opinion that those three should work very closely with each other. Mm -hmm. um, and that being said, sometimes you just have to know where your role and where your place is and things, right? Like there might be a privy conversation between um, the, the P and the VP about something that the SAA is just not privy to because it's not really regarding him, right? Yeah. Maybe it's something else on a different level than that. Um, there might be conversations between the Prez and the SAA that absolutely the VP wouldn't know about, you know, um, at least until it's made known to him. Um, and so there are different channels of communication, different responsibilities. Um, but they're both reporting to the P in their different roles and responsibilities. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. And I totally agree. Um, you know, and elaborate on that a little bit. Um, you know, when, like you were talking about, like when the, when the president's wanting to, you know, take charge of uh, a certain form of leadership. And like you said, they, they all have goal, they all have goals and intents and everything like that. And they're supposed to, right. Um, they have, they were voted in because of their views for the club and where they want the club to go. And while they're leading the club in, to go this direction, they'll be making some calls on the fly and they'll bounce ideas off the SAs head all the time and kind of see how this like, Hey, like, 
they'll use you like you're talking about that little book that you have you know like you'll keep it in your pocket to have the bylaws the prospect uh, handbook and everything in there i don't have it but i want to make one <laughs> oh, yeah. and sometimes the president will use uh their saa as a living version of that book and be like hey what does the the bylaw say about this because like you said they are human right um yeah he may have helped write that bylaw a couple of years ago but that was a couple of years ago right and so he will seek advice on how to handle certain situations at times. Yeah, so I totally agree with what you're saying. So yeah, I think that kind of covers the, you know, enforcing the bylaws and the standards and kind of being a protector and a defender of the MC um, using the bylaws um, as that huge source, right? And then uh, we've talked a lot about the, or we're going to talk about security, right? So one of the responsibilities of um, the sergeant in arms is security. And so how does an SA accomplish that task? I mean, that, that can be a pretty big task, right? It seems like it could be. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's affected uh, inside the clubhouse and while you're at events outside the clubhouse. Um, it might be as simple as, you know, where we're, where we're parking the bikes when we get into a parking lot, you know, like, hey, uh, we'll go up and tell the guys like, hey, this can be a large event. I really think we need to move our, our bikes closer to where we're going to be sitting over here. Um, so you can keep a close eye on those. Um, it'll be keeping track of our members and where they're going and what they're doing. Um, so if for some reason we need to head out, we can, we can do so organized and uh, in an in orderly fashion um, and safely. Um, Chief, do you have any uh, input on the security there? Yeah, I mean, it's not just like what you're saying. It's you know, if there's a big event, then you can strategically park. But that also comes into comes down to, you know, if we're pulling in and we were to notice, like the striker, if we notice something, bikes that belong to another club, whoever it may be, or a situation that doesn't exactly feel right, then mm -hmm. it's all about keeping everyone that we're with safe so to terms of that just for the safety aspect then so be it but you got to make a call and take everything into consideration for what it is yeah i think you're yeah. just talking about that situational awareness right is just kind yeah, of being yeah. aware of your general situation you know if you're if you guys are at a bar together and you realize somebody's just extremely plastered you know that could be a threat to you guys right so um, just being aware of the situation, what's going on. Um, cause <coughs> honestly there's threats everywhere. There's threats on the road, right? Um, there's going to be threats when we're at events and public events, right? There could be yeah. threats when we're doing our own gatherings. Right. And, yeah. um, and then there's other stuff, right? We have information. What about, um, what about intellectual knowledge or our, like our bylaws, for instance, or um, or information that shouldn't be outside of the club. Yeah. So real quick, I don't want to be backtracking just a tiny bit, but I wanted to give an example on the public uh, security. Um, mm -hmm. side. So we were on a ride. I'm not sure if you'll remember, but we were on a ride back in uh, September, I believe. Um, you know, we were at this larger event and there are a lot of families there. There are a lot of kids there. There are a lot of our club members there, a lot of our brothers and sisters. Right. And uh, um, there was there was a, a homeless man there. I'm not sure if you remember, um, but he was using a, he was loading up a pipe out there in the open. Right. Um, with this white powder and you're just doing it right there next to all the families. And, you know, not everything has to be dealt with, with straight force and aggression. I walked up to the guy and I knew I wasn't going to want this guy smoking some crack around, you know, all the family and friends that we have around. And I told him like, I told him he's got one of two options, right? Like I had a plate of food with me. I was going to give him, I was like, you look like you're hungry. So I was going to give you um, some choices here, right? You can take this plate of food, and you can go throw your drugs in the trash right over there and you can enjoy this plate of food and you can continue to hang out around here and enjoy the day or you can get your ass up and leave right he opted to keep the food and stay and eat but you know that's one thing we got to look out for even outside of the club is potential threats to the club from outside sources and that one was you know just a straight up citizen 
Um, I just knew that uh, drug use like that around our our family um, was not a safe environment. You know, yeah. and then going back into what you're talking about of like uh, keeping kind of some of our our bylaws um, information, yeah. right? Yeah. Like a lot of the times we're just, we're a conduit, right? So before information gets released from inside the club to outside the club, it's going through the SAA and it's kind of getting filtered for any information that shouldn't be released. Um, events are brought up to the SAAs and they're like, hey, should we go to this event? You know, this does look like a good event. And we'll let you know, like, oh yeah, that, that was a really good event. I think we should go. Or, you know, for this club security purpose, I don't think that one's a good a good one to go to. And it's a popular well, event where clubs X, Y, and Z are going to be there. Then it's probably not a good idea to show up. Yeah, or like if someone's writing a message to um, someone outside, like a potential hangaround, right? We'll filter and observe conversations that are had with hangarounds to make sure that inf information that's released to them is kosher. So. Yeah, and we try to teach that lesson to them, you know, while they're prospects is like, hey, if it's club business, you don't talk about it, right? Well, yeah, and I'm just talking about the information that is being released to hangarounds. Like, right. if someone's uh, releasing some information about uh, something that we're doing to them, thinking that it's okay to tell them about this event when it's a club only event, I'll I'll jump in and correct them on that. And that comes so really, from that's that. that's kind of the push and pull of information that the SA wants to be very aware of what's going on, right? I mean, yeah. the SA wants to control that you know that situation. He wants to control the information being pushed out um, without his permission or without the guidelines, and that's why he is in charge of um, the prospecting process, right? In general, of how that club prospects is because he is managing that expectation of what they're learning and part of that is learning information management right and kind of valve on the pipeline yeah like the sop for most clubs is hey you just you zip it you don't talk about club business outside of the club and if you want to have a, a meeting about club stuff then you need to here's my essays number you can call and set up an appointment or let me get your information and i'll give it to my essay and he'll reach out to you right that's why yeah. that's a SOP for um, so many clubs is because that uh, the SAA's job is to protect information, right? Because information is power. And if that information gets into the wrong hands about um, your club or your events or, or information that's not supposed to be shared, it could be problematic. It could create a security risk for the club, correct? Oh, yeah. No, 100 percent. You know, um, and there's variants of all the kinds of information like that. Um I totally agree with that. What about you, Chief? Yeah, I completely agree. And I'd even take it a step further because everyone everyone remembers the game you played when you're growing up telephone, right? So even if something even if a piece of information may go out that's fine, it's there's no not really any club business involved, it's it's been cleared. By the time it makes its rounds, there could be something that cause a stir and, and it wasn't intended that way at all so that's why it's just that much more critical to be super diligent about what is actually being said because you don't want things misinterpreted that they're not intended to be that way yeah no i agree um is there anything on the duties and responsibilities that you guys uh want to cover before we kind of transition into characteristics uh, I think we tackled that one pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Just, just one thing, one thing, guys. It just comes back to situation awareness one more time. Make sure that you're you're in the right state of mind to really protect the club. If you're if you're out and you know ten beers in, you're probably not going to be thinking the straightest and the clearest. Mm -hmm. So just make sure make sure that you're you're checking yourself as well as everyone else because like i'm not going to go out to a big event and get sloshed that's that's just not me i want to i want to make sure that i'm sound with myself and with my awareness to what's going on yeah yeah and that's your responsibility right that's your responsibility to the club that's the position that you're yeah. serving in is to protect and that's not something that you always need to do 
uh, hold that mantle all by yourself is like you can delegate some of that responsibility to members and say, hey, we need, you know, security at this door and we're going to run shifts and you can be responsible for that, setting that system up and then you can kind of um, supervise it. Right. Or kind of make yeah. sure it's being done correctly. Um, but yeah. SAs can delegate, you know, some of these things as long as they're supervising and making sure that it's getting done. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the only other thing that I had was just make sure you check yourself because you can't enforce things that you can't hold your you can't enforce standards that you can't hold yourself to as well. Yeah. yeah, you definitely have to hold yourself to the same standards. Like if you were like you guys were talking about, you're gonna have a lot of sober nights. You know, you can't enforce something on a someone being too sloppy because they were way too drunk when you were over there in the corner pissing yourself because of how drunk you were, right? So it's, this isn't the type of job that you can have double standards and you need to hold yourself accountable to all those same standards and exceed them. And a lot of, to be safe, I say exceed them. Yeah, so there was a couple of comments. One says, yeah, you shouldn't be the most intoxicated at the event as a Sergeant in Arms. And the other one says, agree, can't hold others accountable if you, um, if you don't hold yourself at the same level. So I agree. You're kind of setting the bar for your chapter. You're supposed to be that example of someone who follows the bylaws an example of a of a good member mm -hmm. um we lose chief oh maybe he's just it's frozen like over there so getting into characteristics right we have um in a lot of clubs the sa is a senior leader and if if you were looking to vote on a senior leader of your club, if you were looking to who you'd put your trust in as an SA, my question to both of you are, what are some characteristics of an SA that you would admire or things that you would look for in somebody that you would be placing your vote of confidence in an SAA? Um, I'm always looking for someone that's level-headed, you know, doesn't overreact to situations, can think themselves um think about the situation before they react so i definitely want someone that's like level-headed and able to handle that situation the last person i would want there is someone who's a hothead who's someone who is there for the the power there to be the enforcer you know there because they want to look like a badass that's the last person that i would want to vote to be in that position so somebody who's not like there for the ego part yeah yeah, um, I mean, it's actually there to serve, you know, and they're just, they're cool headed, you know, being able to, which is funny, right? Because when you think about it, you think about essays as like, oh, there are these tough guys or, you know, these guys are going to kick your ass, right? I think that's kind yeah. of the mentality that people think of when they think of Sergeant in Arms, right? Mm -hmm. Um but really, is that the best thing for, is that the best quality for a sergeant in arms to have somebody who's just quick to jump in and quick to throw down? No, not at all. You know, and like, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I feel like the SAA should have a tiny bit of that feeling, right? Because, you know, you also don't want someone in there who's, you know, too, they, that's a, just going to be oh. walked on. Yeah, hey, you want them to be like firm, right? You want them to be steadfast in their resolve. You want them to be able to take a solid ground um, and to stand by what's right. You know, I, that's what I think of somebody who's bold and um, isn't afraid to stand up for what's right. Yeah, um, I no. think that's what kind of Lance was getting at here when he says someone with a lot of integrity, right? Um, because at the end of the day, they're going to do what's right no matter the cost. Um, and I think that's a great quality to have as an SA, someone, someone who's bold, but at the same time is able to de-escalate conflicts, right? Is you yeah. can be bold in a stance, but not try to escalate it, right? You can, you can be bold, but still try to bring, um, the conflict level down. Yeah. You know, so, that comes. De-escalation is key. And a lot of times as a sergeant in arms, you're problem solving, right? Sometimes, man, I've I've been assigned as a sergeant in arms by uh, the president to go um, resolve an issue that was pretty intense between two members, right? Mm -hmm. And um, 
you try to de-escalate whenever possible, but that's not always possible. Right. And so what, what are some, um, advice that you guys have, or how do you guys, um, deal with that? Cause sometimes that's difficult when you're dealing with conflicts, uh, between, um, between a brother and the club or between two brothers. Uh, how do you, how would you, uh, recommend handling that? Because that's difficult sometimes because they're, they could be your best friend. They could be a really good brother of yours. You know, for me, it comes down to, you know, step one, like I keep saying this over and over and over again, but it is important knowing the bylaws, right? Uh, step two is also knowing your brothers, knowing how they're going to react to the situation, kind of like thinking through the situation and how they're, they're going to handle it and being level-headed enough to find a resolution that's going to make them both happy or that's going to make the club happy. What's going to be best for the club in that situation. Um, sometimes one of those will uh, rub against one of the others. Like what's best for the club might not be what's uh, best for one of the members in their own mind. Um, but treating them fairly and justly and really thinking out the situation and kind of taking yourself out of it and just acting as an SAA in my mind will put you in the best position to handle that situation appropriately. Yeah, I think it kind of goes a little bit to what Jester and Kenny are saying. Um, Speak softly, but carry a big stick is like, be calm about it and be rational and logical about it be a listener but at the end of the day you are there to get something done and at the end of the day you're there to resolve a conflict at the end of the day you're there to make sure that the bylaws are being followed right it's having that resolve but being able to be calm and being able to be um like you said abel uh earlier is just being able to think clearly and uh, look at different, uh, Angle. look at it from different approaches, right? Have an objective yeah. view on it and not just your personal view. Yeah. Like most of the time you're going to have to take your personal view out of this. You, you really do need to take your personal view out of this job. Um, if you have your personal view tied into this job too much, you're going to start enforcing to your own agenda without even realizing it. Um, at least that's my opinion. Chief might have a different opinion about it or he might have a different opinion about how to handle two brothers that are conflicting with each other. I don't know. You know, it's, I got to agree with almost everything you said. And I'm, let me rephrase that. I'm not disagreeing with anything that you said. Okay. It's (laughs) you're being being objective, right? You're going into a situation that's not going to be super comfortable because these, these two brothers might be your, you know, the closest that you are to anyone in the club. And, you don't you don't want to be that middle man that goes in and you're like okay okay guys we're gonna like yeah we're done right it's you gotta you gotta base things off of the clear and unbelievable <coughs> facts of what has occurred and yeah. just like what shop was saying it's you gotta be objective instead of biased towards one or the other and so that's really when it comes down to taking your personal opinions out of things. Because if you walk into something with a bias towards one side or the other, then you've already started off on a bad foot. Yeah. So you got to make sure you really check yourself at the door, that oracle door before you go into that situation to make sure, again, you're doing what's best for the club and what's best for the two involved. I would say that's probably how I started a lot of my conversations as sergeant at arms when I had to do disciplinary actions or anything is I'm here on behalf of the club. And I just want you to know from one brother to another that I love you. Yeah. Right. It's like, um, I think that kind of gets the point across is like, you're doing your job and you're wearing your sergeant at arms hat right now, not your brother hat. And, mm-hmm. but you, as one brother to another, like you love them and you want what's best for them still. Right. Yeah. Like I love you, but you fucked up. Right. <laughs> so, and I, and, and yeah. we all fuck up, right? Like yeah. 
everybody fucks up. <laughs> I think um, I can remember a situation or two when you corrected me on a situation or two or three. You know, it happens and uh, we learn from it and move on. That's the goal, right? I think that's yeah. one of the biggest goals of a uh, sergeant at arms is a teacher. They are there to, you know, the disciplinary is not just the discipline. The disciplinary is to, to help people learn. Yeah. Right? No, I'm excited. You know, with um, like all is there any other characteristics um, about an SAA that you guys feel like is important that we haven't covered? Um, I like you my SAA to be able to carry a firearm. What did you say, Chief? I said you got to be a realist. That's that's my personal opinion. You got to yeah. you got to look at things at face value, and it's fine to be a dreamer, but it goes back to the initial of check yourself at the door, be realistic with what's happening. And don't try and don't try and base. You're just stop. Sorry, my dog's going nuts. Um, you gotta. It's really just it checking yourself. now that I'm focused on my dog. Uh, it's It's you're checking yourself and making sure that you're being a realist and logical, and, and really just looking out for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Sorry, I lost my train of thought on that one after the dogs start freaking out. No, you're good. I, I think some those are some good characteristics we've talked about, right? It's like being level-headed, um, being being a bold individual, situational awareness. Um, those are all awesome uh, characteristics, I think, that I look for in SAAs. I think, I think that situational awareness one is a hard thing to teach people. Right, I think, I think that's a natural characteristic, you know. It's Trying not. To... It's not natural for some people, you know, and for yeah, some I, people, I it's taught, you know. I wish it was natural for everybody, but you know, I, I think part of that is where you grew up, you know. Yeah. Part of that just might be your mindset, and some of that might be uh, your profession. You know, I'm sure that strike and I got a lot of that from you know being in the military because we're this stuff is kind of pounded into you situational awareness. I mean, how many times have I heard that like a billion times? Right. So, um, yeah. So, you know, one, one other thing strike or sorry, shots quick. Yeah. Um, going back to, I'm not trying to backtrack, but going back to one of the other characteristics and traits is someone that carries themselves with confidence, but not cockiness because if you're carrying yourself with a level of confidence, people people pick up on that. You can you can go anywhere and see like you can pick out people, you're like, okay, he walks with confidence, he carries himself with confidence, versus that guy's walking like he owns the place, but step up to him, he's gonna back down. So it's it's that fine line of you wanna walk in and make sure that you have that have that confidence backing you, but not that arrogance to stir problems. Yeah. So how do you, how do you change that perspective? Because I think that perspective is a lot. And sometimes I think people give off the wrong vibes, right? Yeah. A lot of it's just extending, extending a hand. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be anything crazy, but it can be, you can be the one that walks up to someone for an introduction, you don't need to be the one that wants to approach. If you don't seem approachable, you can be the one to approach people and then talk to them and say, hey, you know, what, what kept you from coming up and talking to me? And just try, try and mold things based on other people, right? Yeah. You're only human. You know, and I don't, I don't feel like a lot of these traits are teachable is the thing. Like they can be long-term but I don't, I don't think they're teachable short term. I think like you were talking about, it's just developed through life and what kind of life you had, what kind of experiences you have. I, I think it's all experience based learning. Right. So I don't think this is uh, one of those positions that can just be taught to any individual. Um, I really think you need to be picking the best people based off their characteristics and their experiences. And I think that being said, I would agree with you. I think that the SAA, in my mind, is a difficult position to fill um, because of that mindset. Is that mindset is is difficult? It's not. 
innate in a lot of people. Um, it's hard to learn and uh, you can learn it over time, but it does take a lot of time. It's not just the book knowledge part. It's the situational awareness part. It's um, there's a lot to it. And so I would say um, keep growing in your position. You know, there's a lot going on in the SA position. And I don't think, um, at least for me, I know after two years of an SAA, I wasn't close to being perfect in the SA position, you know? Yeah. You know, and I, I, no one should be coming into this position being, you know, perfect. I think everyone has something to learn. Uh, now, I said those traits are not teachable, in my opinion, but there are some aspects of it that are, right? Um, and one thing that I think that can be taught is how to, you know, kind of, self check yourself we were all talking about how an SAA needs to check themselves and see how they're they're applying themselves to the bylaws and you know that's something i definitely learned as an SAA when i took on this role personally was how to ensure that i am doing my job appropriately how am i fitting this position appropriately and i've always had to uh, uh quite a few times i've had to check myself and check myself at the door and be like, damn, I'm fucking up right now. You know, like I, I need to approach this much differently than I am. I need to backtrack. I need to hit restart and I need to approach this problem from a much different angle, you know? And I think that that for me was a lesson that I had to be taught. You know, it was a little bit more self-taught and I also got some advice. Um, but I don't expect anyone to come into this role and be perfect. Uh, I expect everyone to have a lesson to be taught or else this wouldn't be an experience. You know, you, you wouldn't be gaining any experience. The only way you can gain experience is by learning and going through those lessons, making mistakes and figuring out how to correct them. You're learning from the people you teach. Yeah, 100%. That's, that's what it boils down to. You can't you go know, through anything without learning from everyone else that you are trying to teach because you're not yeah. just teaching them you're teaching yourself about them and what it takes to be an saa and be to me but we can't tell them that we're still learning <laughs> yeah and i i i think we've talked about this a lot right is knowledge is power um the bylaws mm -hmm. we can read you know there's books about how to be an saa that you can read right i mean um black dragon He's got the Sergeant Arms Bible, right? You can read that. That could help you in your position to be a Sergeant Arms. There's some of these innate skills that we're talking about that are hard to teach. Um, they're intangibles that you can't just pick up a book and read, right? And I think that's really where it's important for people that are in that SAA position to be mentoring um, other members in their chapter because one day you're not going to be that SA forever. You're you're responsible for teaching that to the members in your chapter. Teach them about situational awareness. Teach them about security. You know, be an example of teaching them about the bylaws. You know, you that you are an educator in those things, and um, some of that's by your example. Some of that's by you teaching them life lessons, and some of that is by helping them become book smart. Oh yeah, no, hundred percent. I totally agree. You know, it's um, interesting. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, it's it's interesting that you bring up that phrase, shop for being book smart, because that's book smart is something, in my opinion, that can be taught based on study. Street smart is something that is critical mm -hmm. to an SAA, and that can't be taught. It goes back to all the other traits characteristics that are extremely hard to teach short term. Yeah. Street smarts is kind of takes all of that and combines it where you can look at two people and say, okay, well, yeah, you're better fit just because of this. Yeah. And sometimes that's uh, pulling a member aside and just being like, Hey, you're at an event, just pulling a member aside and be like, Hey, what, what have you observed about this event so far? And sometimes it's just getting people to think about it that way, right? I've done that. I've pulled aside members. You know, I've had members pull me aside and said, hey, I I observed this. Have you observed that? And sometimes I'm like, yeah, I did observe that. And other times I'm like, 
no, I didn't observe that. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Right. But uh, that's the mindset. I think that we really need to get in going um, to focus on is that that situational awareness and the educating each other, whether that's through mentorship, whether that's through education, I think, um, or both, right? I think both are super important. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Um, I think we've pretty well covered most of the topics that we thought it was a good to cover. Um, I'm sure we haven't discussed everything that there was about Sergeant Arms because there is a ton of material. There's books written about it. Um, we'll most likely do another video on this topic later on in the year. Um, with that being said, Strike and Chief, what are your uh, final words of advice for um, maybe a new Sergeant at Arms or even a lesson learned that going into it, you would have done differently from the start being an SA? You know, for me, if I were to advise anyone else as a brand new SA, I know I've said it over and over again. Step one, read the bylaws, understand the bylaws and where they come from and their intent. Um, you know, number two is I would advise that they go into it with an open mind, uh, kind of make sure that they get away from any mindset that they know everything that they got this position because they've been working for it and they deserve it and kind of get them out of that mindset and try to put them into a, they're going to serve the club. Myself. That would be my advice. Thanks, um, you know, for me, it's, there's a lot there, there is a lot, but if I, you know, I don't think I'd honestly do anything different and not because I'm perfect because I'm definitely not, but it's because everything for me has been a learning experience and it's made me who I am today as part of the club. So just, I guess the best advice that I could give is don't be afraid to ask questions, number one, because you don't know everything. I sure as hell don't know everything. I'm never going to do. Yeah. Uh, it's ask questions, learn from others, and I mean, don't be afraid of what you're getting into. You no, know, go into it with that, with that desire to serve and to be the best that you can be. Not anyone perfect, because, like I said, you're not. So if you go into it with the right intention of, I'm here to serve the club, and everything I do, every move I make is going to be based on the sanctity of say, sanctity, safety, and security of the club that's that's what it boils down to that's what a lot of it's about mm -hmm. i would agree with everything you guys said and on the, on that top of that i would say you know strive to do your best but you're gonna fuck it up right mm -hmm. you are <laughs> um probably like every position you're gonna fuck it up um that's not a sa specific but the sa is complicated in some regards um, over other positions, right? You're going to fuck it up. And I would say my advice would be make sure that your heart is in the right place and focus on being a righteous brother in your position, right? Because it's not about you. It's about the club. You're serving yeah. the club. You're doing the will of the club. You know, you're doing um, tasks that were given to you by the president. It's like, take that and really feel the responsibility in that and and do the best you can right but as long as your heart's in the right place and you're and you're being righteous and you're serving the club even if you fuck it up it's not going to be that big of a fuck up because you were trying to do what was right right yeah and you learn from it and hopefully next time you're not going to fuck it up as bad you'll do a better job right so that would be my advice is make sure your heart's in the right place and um just do the best you can Oh no, for sure. I mean, I think you you put it very well. Uh, you're gonna like in any role, you're gonna fuck up, and I think you should just embrace it. Just embrace it, you know. Uh, acknowledge it and get ready for it. But 
even when you do fuck up, just acknowledge it's not going to be the last time you're going to fuck up. So yeah, you know, pick yourself back up, and 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 do it again. Like, how can I improve this? What can I do to be a better SA? You know, yeah, what, don't what be can afraid I learn? to reach out for help. Yeah, and yeah. and call call if you need help. Like, call your president. Hey, call another SA of another chapter. Call your state SA. You know. Um, or even a brother who's a past SA that you feel like might have some words of advice for you is like that's what your brothers are there for. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I appreciate it you guys. Um, thanks, thanks Strike, thanks Chief for coming on and uh appreciate all your guys input. You guys had a lot of good things to say and I learned a lot. So thank you guys very much. Thank you. All right guys, I'll chat with you in a second. All right. All right, everybody. We appreciate you guys joining us for the Sergeant at Arms uh, leadership video tonight. If we didn't cover a topic that you would like discussed or you would like our opinion on, go ahead and hit um, hit the comments, write it out. We'll respond to you. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Um, next week, we're going to be talking about the secretary position. So that'll be same day, same time next week, uh, 7.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. We appreciate you guys coming and watching and you guys have a good week. Have a good night.